This is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics God, preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Today's episode, we have another blueprint review from another gentleman by the name of Jacob. Last episode, we had a Jacob. This episode, we have a Jacob. So we're going to jump right into it. This episode, we're going to be going over his blueprint, which is a um, more of a vertical setup set up on one side, uh, one portion on the side of a building. So it's going to have one, uh, on, it's going to be positioned on the southern end. So he wants to make sure that his setup is adequate. He has a few things inside of his um, setup that he want to make sure is positioned correctly and that it's the piping and the plumbing is all correct. So we'll just jump right into it right now. Hey, what's going on, Brooklyn and uh, School of Aquaponics? My name is Jacob Washington, and I've got a blueprint I would like for y'all to look at for me. What's going on, Jacob Washington? I'm looking forward to the blueprint. Let's get to it. Woo! So if uh, y'all take a look at my computer screen here, basically what we've got is a fish tank, a mechanical filter, biological filter, sump tank in the ground underneath the fish tank, a uh, tank for fingerlings, a, uh, this is going to be a stacked uh, floating raft system, and then over here in these uh, shelf units, I'm going to have uh, media beds that are uh, 12 inches deep uh, with about 8 to 10 inches of media in each of them and so my plumbing um, should be a simple enough system I think um, so everything's running in and out of the sump tank underneath the fish tank here so we've got this is a uh, anything pink with a circle is a fill and anything red with a square is a drain um, so we've got the pipe in here filling both the fish tank and the uh, media beds in the tower over here. Um, we've got it running down to the fingerling tank to the floating raft system and I forgot to do the little circle there on that and then uh, we got everything draining down the back end of it back into the sump tank. And the first suggestion is I would definitely separate your fingerling production phase from your main production phase. Listen to me. You want to have both of these separate. You don't want to be running them in the same system. And the reason is they both have different requirements. They both have two separate requirements. And also you have um, a hybrid system. So I would separate it on the basis of that also. But you want your fingerling tank and your fingerling phase to be totally separate. Uh, the feeding rates are different. Um, the amount of vegetables that you can grow in that uh, um, setup is going to be different um, than what you have in your media-based system. So let's do that right away. Separate the plumbing, but you have the correct idea. You, de you do need a fingerling phase. You need to have your fingerlings grow up, and, um, and then from there, you want to once they grow up to a certain amount, uh, a certain size, then they'll be transferred over into your main production phase. So let's separate those two, separate the plumbing. But we're on the right track, though. Um, fish tank is pouring down into the mechanical filter, down into the biological filter, and down into the sump tank. And then the floating raft system is, uh, oh, looks like I didn't, uh, put any sort of drainage for the fingerling tank, but that'll be hooked up as well. So the fingerling tank, once again, since it's separate, you'll put a different sump tank, a different pump, everything will be different for the fingerling setup. So just keep that in mind. And so a vertical view of this. Is this right here again we got everything coming out of the sump tank going up into the fish tank to the vertical towers fingerling tank floating raft system and again back down and into the sump tank so on here I noticed that you have your media beds connected to a mechanical and biological filter and now if you keep the media beds um, which I'm gonna make a suggestion later on in the video that you may consider something other than the media beds. But if you keep these media beds, you do not need a biological filter or a solids filter. Those, you can just get rid of those. You will, you can take those and move them over to your, um, your floating raft setup. The media beds, they provide biological filtration and solids filtration. So you don't have to worry about that, but your deep water culture setup, your floating rafts, uh, setup will need solids filtration. So you can move that over 
to that area. It doesn't need a biological filter, but it does need solids filtration in, in order for it to properly function um, and order to run effectively. So consider that. Um, and so some measurements for all of that is the uh, the fish tank is going to be two by four by five feet, about three hundred gallons. Um, got our mechanical filter and our bio filter here. I don't know how big those actually need to be, uh, so I would love some advice on that. Um, but I went ahead and just threw down some numbers just to have something there. So when you're sizing mechanical filters, biological filters, um, we'll start uh, primarily with the mechanical filters. If you're using a radio flow filter, um, a swirl filter, a drum filter, if you're using any one of those, it's primarily going to be based upon the hydraulic loading rate or the, uh, the water flow rate coming into the unit. So I don't know your your uh, water flow rate that's coming in there. So there's no calculations that can be done. It's not just um, something that you can just give a general estimation. You have to know the the um, actual water flow rate that is going to be coming into the unit in order to properly size it. So um, if you're doing like a, a, a DIY type of setup, then you would have to know that water flow rate and then you would uh, base the calculations off of that. If you're going to purchase a radio flow filter or a, um, a swirl filter or a drum filter, then you, whoever you purchase purchase it from, the manufacturer, they're going to ask you for these specs anyway. And then from there, they'll uh, give you the, um, the unit that will match the needs of your system. So that's how that would work. If you're using a biological filter, a bead filter, excuse me, if you're going to use a bead filter for um, the solids filter uh, filtration and the biological filtration, because it's a two-in-one component, then it's going to be based off of the flow rate and also the feeding rate as well, because it has uh, biological properties in there. So the feeding rate contributes to uh, biological uh, processes that occur uh, within the filter. So that's basically what you're looking at. Um, I don't have any idea on what you know what you're uh, going to be putting in this system. So I wouldn't be able to give you any type of um, uh, calculations on the size of filter that you need. Sump tank is going to be two by four by two and a half feet and about 150 gallons. Um, and so I, I made sure that the sump tank, since it's going to be in the ground, was uh, twice as big as what I needed for uh, at the moment with, with my system running at what it's running at, uh, just so I don't have to dig it out if I want to, you know, add some more on there. And I see exactly what you're doing, which it, it can be a smart move to do that, um, to plan in advance, especially if you know you're going to be upsizing the, um, the, the system that you have. It's good to properly prepare for that. So that's a good thing. Uh, these originally were going to be NFT systems, and I decided I'd rather do media beds so I could grow some heavier crops. Uh, so the tower on the north wall will be 9 by 11 feet. The tower in the center of the room, and that is this tower here, uh, that is going to be 6 by 6 feet. And then the uh, floating raft system grow beds, those will be uh, six feet by two feet by one feet deep uh, or one foot deep. And again, that's going to have about 10 inches of media in it. Um, so basically, I'm, I'm just wondering, is the plumbing going to work? And also, I would love to hear uh, whether or not you think I'm using this space efficiently. And I'll show you the space here. Um, I do plan on growing uh, to sell, not, not a huge amount, but to uh, the neighbors and whatnot in the neighborhood. Um, and so basically, this is, this is it. I got to build a little... Uh, 14 by 10 foot greenhouse and uh, and put it all together um, but I would love to hear back and uh, thank you for doing what you do and making your your work so accessible to people like me on the internet so a few pointers that I want to provide I want to um, put it in front of you that you know you have the double setup or the the, the, the the media beds that are stacked one in front of another and you only have the sun coming on that one portion coming around. I think it's the southern, the southern end. So what's going to happen is once the sun comes around, you start growing plants on that first stack. The back portion is not going to receive uh, as much light. So that the, and, and, and turn those uh, plants in the back, 
they're going to have poor production. So that's when you have, that's why I was saying in the beginning that I'm going to suggest that you um, uh, look towards some other type of production method, maybe vertical towers. That might be more suitable for what you're trying to do in this limited space because vertical towers, what you can do is it's easy to exchange them or to, um, to, to change them around. So you can have the, the front production in the, um, the front phase for a certain amount of time, and then you can take those and move them to the back and move the ones in the back to the front easily. You can do that easily if you build the system correctly, and therefore you can still utilize that small space that you have set up. The media beds, you know, it's, it's pretty much there. It's pretty much, uh, when you set it up, that's pretty much where it's going to stay. There's no moving, none of that. And the, like I said, the back portion is going to receive poor production when the light is going to, uh, is unable to pen uh, penetrate through the first uh, stack that you have in the media bed. So that's what I would cons uh, reconsider um, if I were you in this small setup here. So you want to make sure that you have that in your in consideration before you put this together. Um, the media bed is also in, you're in a tight space, so it's also a lot of heavy material. So it just might not be worth the hassle putting media beds in that small space, stacking them all together. It's just a lot of heavy load in a small space, and it's just going to be really, really rough to work with. In that small space, like I said, I will consider doing the vertical setup. That's what I would consider doing. Look at videos from Bright Agrotech. They sell uh, vertical systems, um, and they have, the, they have the setup all pretty much down packed. Um, also, there's a gentleman by the name of Larry Athens. He also uh, produces uh, and manufactures uh, vertical towers. Look into something like that. See how they're setting them up and then maybe take some tips from them when it comes to the vertical setup. So that's what I would suggest, my man, Jacob. Um, I look forward to seeing what you come up with, the type of production that you come up with, the plumbing, all the systems that you come up with. Um, and hopefully you have a lot of success when you put it together. Hopefully you're able to, you know, feed the neighborhood. And if it, you know, goes well, then maybe you can expand and maybe jump into feeding more of the community. So, you know, the sky's the limit. So I want to thank you again for sending your video. Anyone else who has any videos that they want to be reviewed, Brooklyn at the school of aquaponics.com video format, and I will be more than happy to help you out. So with that being said, woo!